Okay, well apparently today's just trade deadline day then. Wow, the Colorado Avalanche are going for it! Alright, there's already rumors that your garden alumni and Colorado Avalanche captain Gabriel Landeskog could be coming back, who knows, fingers crossed. I mean, if they were to announce that, like, that might be the news of the trade deadline, honestly. But the Avalanche just made seismic changes. Two big trades, and honestly, you could argue that either one of them are the biggest deal of the day so far. Man, saying so far is wild. Who knows, maybe they end up with Gensel at the end of all this, by the time this video is posted. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. What's going on? What's the first deal? The Colorado Avalanche have acquired defenseman Sean Walker and a fifth round draft pick in 2026 from the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for forward Ryan Johansson and a first round selection in 2025. That first round selection, by the way, is conditional because it is top 10 protected. So if they get a pick in the top 10 next year, lol, I can't imagine that being possible then it would slide to 2026 and if that were to happen then the avalanche would really be in trouble so here's the thing you gotta take trades as a whole when a deal is one for one and don't worry we'll get to byram for middle stat yeah that just is what it is but it is unfair and incorrect to look at this deal and go the avalanche paid a first round pick for sean walker no they paid a first round pick for sean walker and to get rid of Ryan Johansson's contract. Now, if you want to criticize Colorado Avalanche management for trading for Ryan Johansson in the first place, yeah, okay, I'll hear that. Because what happened June 24th, 2023, the Avalanche traded Alex Galchenyuk, who I forgot they had, to the Nashville Predators, basically just his rights, in order to get Ryan Johansson half retained. At the time, Johansson, eight million bucks, just didn't make any sense for anybody. He wasn't an $8 million player anymore. Ryan Johansson at 4 million bucks, mm, that could work. And it's 4 million bucks this season and next. Did he play really well? No. 13 goals, 23 points in 63 games is not the end of the world, but for 4 million bucks and where he was playing in the lineup and where he was supposed to play in the lineup at the beginning of the season, yeah, that's pretty bad. It was an inefficient use of the Colorado Avalanche's cap space, and they are not a team that has patience for inefficiency. They needed the center depth at the time, it just didn't work out. And the Philadelphia Flyers have already placed Ryan Johansson on waivers. I'm very doubtful anyone claims him though. I think he's still an NHL player. Four million bucks though. Ugh. Now what the Avalanche get, Sean Walker. It absolutely stacked right side of the ice. Makar, Manson, Walker, gross. Now as you know, during the 2022 season, the Colorado Avalanche ended up winning the Stanley Cup because they were really, really good. A lot of that was because of Kale Makar, but it's so underrated how big of an impact Josh Manson had on the Avalanche and that cup run. But I did have some concerns watching that as an outsider because Manson was getting beat up and doing the beating up. He took on so much of the physical load for the Avalanche. Is that gonna change much with Sean Walker? Eh, he's kinda average size, just a hair under 200 pounds, just a hair under six feet. But it just adds more depth to an already ridiculous ridiculously stacked decor. And for their end of the bargain, what a ridiculously interesting season for the Philadelphia Flyers. Like, this team just acquired a first round pick. There's still a really solid chance they make the Stanley Cup playoffs. Why do I say that? They're in them! Right now! They have a top three spot in the Metro. They have 72 points in 63 games. They are tied with the Detroit Red Wings and Tampa Bay Lightning who can't pass them because they're in the Atlantic Division. The closest team to them passing them in the Metro is the Islanders who have two games in hand but they are four points behind the Flyers. Best case scenario for the Islanders is they win their games in hand just to tie the Flyers in points. Then there's the Capitals with 65 points. I, I don't think so. Really it's just Yes, the Islanders. I don't think the Penguins are getting there either, or the Devils. This is actually brilliant management from Danny Briere. If you don't think you can keep this player, and if you can get a first round pick in the process, and the competition below you is so weak, dude, do it! Are you taking talent off of your roster? Yes. Is Sean Walker having a great season for the Philadelphia Flyers? Also, yes. But 
John Tortorella, man, that dude knows how to squeeze blood from a stone. Getting back to Colorado, can I show you a funny tweet? From Arif Dean, Sean Walker would give the Avs three righties and three lefties. Something like Taves McCarr, Gerard Manson, Byram Walker, and then Jack Johnson and uh, Jones. Here's the problem with this tweet. It's already out of date because the Avalanche made another huge deal. This is huge. Because here comes Chris Johnston with machinations. It's a one for one deal. Casey Middlestat to Colorado for Bowen Byram. One for one? Dude, a few years ago, this trade would have been absolute lunacy on behalf of the Colorado Avalanche and a complete fleecing from the Buffalo Sabres because Byram was a fourth overall pick. Really, really promising looking defenseman and Middlestat was kind of a bust. Fast forward a few years and wow, a lot changes. One thing you'll never ever be able to take away from Bowen Byram is he's a Stanley Cup champion and he won the Stanley Cup as a really young player and I loved his game during that cup run. But as these charts from Don Lachizan point out, his underlying numbers are not great right now. He is not having the best season. Meanwhile, Casey Middlestat on a struggling Buffalo Sabres team is just racking up the numbers. Middlestat had 25 points in 77 games in the 18-19 season. The reason he was thought of as a bust is that was his highest point total until last year. In a healthy 82 game season, he only had 15 goals, which eh, but 44 assists for 59 points. Dude's a playmaker. And if you don't love the price that Colorado paid to get Sean Walker, but also get rid of Ryan Johansson, I guess I kind of get it, but Middlestat coming in is an enormous upgrade on Johansson. This season, in another healthy season, 62 games, 14 goals, he should blow by his career high of 15 that he set last year, 33 assists, 47 points. There's still a really good chance he beats his career high in points as well and assists. And in Colorado, he'll get a chance to play his first ever playoff hockey in the NHL. Actually, I'm just looking at his hockey DB, at least according to hockey DB, uh, maybe his first playoff hockey. Now there's a risk here for the Sabres. Byram's career is not heading in the greatest direction, at least in terms of production and underlying numbers and everything. Retirement rumors have followed Byram for the last season or two because this guy has had several devastating concussions in his young career already. There's no guarantees that this guy pans out to what he could have been. There's no guarantees that he pans out to even a dude who should have been drafted in the first round. There's no guarantees that he continues playing for much longer. Of course, he could play until he's 40 years old and it's a non-factor. But forget the fact that he's a former fourth overall pick. This tweet from Kyle Cushman says it all for why the Sabres would be willing to take on that risk. Darlene Power Byram, are you kidding? The left side of the Buffalo Sabres decor could be entirely top four picks. Darlene was first, Power was first, Byram was fourth. That's absurd. I don't know if that's ever happened before outside of the Olympics. It might not have even happened at the Olympics. How do you get two first overall picks and a fourth on the same decor? Buffalo obviously feels like they have the horses to help replace Middlestat into the future. And Byram, if that's a risk, sign me up for that risk. Cause that could be absolutely absurd going into the future. I mean, the one criticism you might have of that deal is there's only one puck. And what, what are those guys going to do? Play 20 minutes each? I mean, I guess you could. I guess your biggest concern is finding them all suitable partners. As for what it means for the Colorado Avalanche as a whole, I am reserving judgment because I don't think they're done. I don't think they're done at all. They got itchy feet. They're up to something. They might go and get Gensel or something else because I didn't see either of these moves happening. Maybe Walker, not Byram for Middlestat. For now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe to SDPN because we are not done yet. And jeez, we got deadline coverage on Friday where we will, if there's no news to break on that day, we, we will at very least recap everything. Uh, I forget where I was in the outro. Subscribe, become a member, buy room for Middlestat one for one, holy crap.